Welcome to The Declutter Diaries. I'm your host, Bonnie Hintonak with Bin Your Space. You'll meet Tina Wolf, a licensed therapist. We are going to explore the connection between your mental health and organizing and decluttering because it's a journey and we're on it too. So this morning, I just felt my space was not clear. I was just like, I have to, I have to figure this out. I have to get this clear in order for me to even sit here and record a podcast today because he's a Bernese mountain dog and sheds when I pet him, it all gathers on my hands. So then I like rub my hands together and then I literally put it behind the sofa where I'm sitting. <laughs> now it doesn't go like behind the sofa between the wall. It's the, right. since we have an L shape, it's the one where like you could still see it. But when it's I- It's to open space. It's to open space. So when I walk down, it literally looks like we have a puppy on the back side of the sofa. And I was like, I need to get that. That's the first thing I see. Same thing with my steps. I have two windows, one at the bottom of the steps, one at the top of the steps. And every morning I go to walk down those steps, especially since it's been beautiful outside that's and I so have my pretty. blinds open. So I look down the steps and that's all I see is this sea of dog hair. And immediately I can't make breakfast. Mm-hmm. I can't do anything. I feel like I have to walk down the steps, grab the vacuum cleaner and take care of the dog hair before I can do anything else. That's so interesting. I feel like it's indicative of how... <laughs> trying to eat your cinnamon cinnamon buns you can't have them i only have two this morning not four (laughs) all right two cinnamon bun tina (laughs) and one cup of coffee today that's it that's all we're allowed yeah but i feel like that's a revelation of what we see first thing in the morning what our space looks like how it can impact literally the beginning of our day and it's crazy because i know he sheds but i didn't it didn't click till this morning his hair little tufts and everything is clutter and it makes me crazy because then i feel like i have to vacuum or the house isn't clean so in this episode today speaking of clutter we're gonna talk about the crazy cycle of clutter because it's never ending. I like to think of it like a carousel. It's going around and around and around and you like can't get off. But then Mm -hmm. when you do get off, it's so easy to get back on. I don't know if it's even a word, but I call it sicilic. It is a cycle. Just like everything else in our life, we have moments where things are up and things are down and we're going through and we're skating through life and things seem pretty good and organized and we have a routine and something happens And that routine is disrupted and we let things go and we let things fall aside. Perfect example. You know, I've got a lot going on right now and some crazy things at work and home and all these things that have happened. And what goes to the wayside the most? My house, my desk. You know, at the end of my day, I don't take that five minutes to tidy things up so that the next morning when I walk into my space, it's (sighs) okay, I can start my day. And that's not what's been happening. So even for me, someone who knows the importance of letting the the things go, it can impact every one of us. And it does. It really does. Definitely a big believer in the routine of a reset. Last night, I had done some things in the office. This room did not look like this before you got here, by the way. I didn't take that time to reset. So there were like markers out and my journal and like my planner. And then there were things over here that I was like, I never... I never put the things on the shelf in the closet. Don't open my closet right now because I I literally just started shoving things in there because I knew you were you were coming. (laughs) And I was like, I will get to that because that is gonna drive me nuts. But I knew I couldn't sit here and record a podcast with you about mental health without a clear space. I had to have my space clear. I wanted to make sure your robot microphone arm, what did you name him? Bob? Bob. Bob that he was set up. I just wanted to make sure this was ready to go. I didn't want to feel like I was getting ready while you were here. It's because I I did not have a reset last night before I went to bed. So then I had to spend time this morning rushing almost to clean this up, hence why I shoved things in the closet. I'm glad you came back to the closet because the <laughs> when you said that, that immediately struck a nerve with me. Because when we think about our brains... And the way we process information and what we do with it as it comes in, that is a compartment. That closet is a compartment. You needed your active working space to be free and clear. So you could put things in a compartment that needed to wait. And we do that every single day with every piece of information and every circumstance that we take Mm. in. We stick it in a compartment and if we don't get back to it in a reasonable amount of time, it builds and builds and builds. And then that cycle, 
that crazy cycle or carousel, as you called it, it permeates everything because we have this weight of this to-do list that needs to happen in our brain. And when that to-do list gets too long, where do we find ourselves? Stressed, overwhelmed, unable to function. It creates such a negative impact on our external self because our internal self isn't right. And it's crazy, the connection. Like we talked about this earlier in another episode of just the connection between your space and your mental health, which is why we're doing this podcast. But I was just thinking my kitchen counter, we we talked about this. The kitchen counter for me is so important to have clear. When I come home and Ryan is here... I know where this is going. We've talked about this. He knows. He's aware. It is not to the same standard as if he travels and comes home. Right now, my counter is clear because he is at work. It stresses me out when there's things left on the counter. It's a trigger. It triggers me into my brain thinking my work is not done. So what I started doing is having a bin, whatever size, and I call it a purgatory bin. And so I put it- I love that. I put it on the counter. Okay, all these things we had, (laughs) we had a bottle of vodka on the on the counter, cocktail glasses, food that had to go in our back stock downstairs and travel mug that gets stored at the bar. I put them all in a bin and I was like, at least it's contained and it's not all over the counter. It had been sitting in this purgatory bin. I try to give myself 24 hours, then I need to do something with it. So then this morning, I took it downstairs, all of it in the bin, and put it where it needed to go, and then it was taken care of. I love that 24-hour concept. It's hard. That It is hard, but it can become a routine. Yes. You know, like you said, this this didn't happen overnight for you. This was a process. <laughs> it was a journey. No, I didn't have tacos and vodka and <laughs> cocktails all in one night. <laughs> I, no, I don't mean, I know. I don't mean the, the one-day journey. I mean the life journey. The yes. life journey of getting from a place where you can't even recognize because you shut it out to being so hyper aware of it and having a routine in place to keep that up so that your mental health does not end up at a deficit because your space is at a deficit. I love that you give that 24 hour thing and the bins. I mean, how classic, you know, bin your space is that. I love that concept because again, it goes back to that compartmentalization that we do in our brains when something's overwhelming. So to physically put it in a space, I love that. It actually really did help me just because then it was all contained and I could then see it's not scattered all over the counter. It honestly was perfect for everything that had to go downstairs. And then I knew once I take a trip downstairs or I wanted to, you know, make sure the counter was clean before we even did our podcast today. Because for me, I need that clear space in the kitchen in order to function. I've had such a wonderful influence on you. (laughs) It's so bad. Yeah, the fact that the drying mat is out right now is like bothering me. Anyway. I'm kind of surprised that you lay your dish rag over the... I'm sorry. No, please so bring it up. Just, that's just one of those things that I noticed this morning. I, As I went to wash my hands, I was like, Bonnie puts her dish rag over the neck of the faucet <laughs> at the sink. That's I knew. An interesting place. Hold on. I knew you noticed that because of the way you put it back. Mentally, I was like, she noticed that I put the dish rag there and I didn't say anything, but it was just like quick thought. And funny, we're talking about this right now. I don't know where else to put it. Where where do I put it? Do you have a divided sink? I I do. So lay it over the center. But what if it's wet and then it doesn't dry? Stainless steel tends to dry very fast and it doesn't hold moisture. It's not as porous, I think, as other surfaces, so... Yeah, I do not like the dish rag hanging hanging over. I don't. I really don't. It stresses me out and I don't like it, but I I didn't have another solution because then what happens is if it is laying over that divide, if something spills on it, it just is like constantly gross. (laughs) I know someone that won't use sponges because of Mm -hmm. that. And I, I would have to ask her what she does. Now I'm very curious. We're going to solve the problem. But that's that's a cycle. That is a cycle because with my sponge, because I've been using the Scura style Mm -hmm. and they're like amazing because they dry quick and 
They don't smell. I'm sorry. I know this is not like infomercial. No, please. But I love the one that you let me borrow. And now I don't borrow. have it anymore. Well, <laughs> Can I have it back, please? <laughs> no, because it, it changed color. So I threw it away. It faded. But it was amazing. Mm. My blue sponges. They don't smell great and they get ooey. Anyway. They're just downright gross. Yeah. And the ones, I don't even know what they're called. You said it. Skira style. They didn't. I know. I really like them. So I need to get that link. Um, It's on my Amazon storefront. Excellent. I even have, and the storefront's just been your space, but I even have a Skira style list just for that reason. I've been using those sponges since February. They reached out to me. I remember when you got them. Yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. I'll try these sponges. And then I was like, I have not gone back. It is a game changer. Okay. So go cycling back yes. to this sponge though. I bought one of those. <laughs> Making <laughs> claw fingers. No. Like it looks like that thing that no. you put on your head. That has <laughs> no, it's a suction. This was oh. sign language for a suction. Okay. Good okay. To know. <laughs> claw fingers. Good to know. So we bought this little like two suction stainless steel uh-huh. like a thing. little dish a, a little that... just a little tray and my sponge just sits in there and that has been amazing because we would then put that on the divided sink area and that would drive me nuts because it would fall and I think that that's why now going back mm-hmm. you know what we were talking about five minutes ago that is why I put the dish rag on the neck of the sink I hate it but that's why I do it but that is the best possible thing for you in that moment to rationalize and rectify something that's bothering you that needs to be fixed. And we do that. We find those accommodations, I'm going to call them. Because they're not really a solution. Because we may not have found the solution yet to decluttering whatever, you know, or getting off of that cycle. Because that cycle never stops. As long as we are human and we're living in a world that is a hot mess And things happen and we're always going to be back on that cycle. But we make accommodations in the moment to be able to get through them until we develop a solution for them. That's a really good way to put that. I feel like going back to my closet, Closet. that is an accommodation. Mm -hmm. I needed this space clear because this took priority this morning. I needed to make sure that my headspace was clear, that I can think and the closet now I'm constant now I'm overanalyzing the closet right but it's that it's that cycle and like I know that I will get to that that's probably my most cluttered closet because we changed the curtains in the office so the other ones they look great by the way I love the colors oh, thank you I kind I of love the gray and mustard I know I really like it I wanted a little pop of color so the old curtains are just in there in the closet It's back to that compartmentalizing the, I wish like I had a way of people seeing what I'm doing, but it's almost like you put it in front of you and then you push it aside because you go, okay, it's here. I recognize it. Mm -hmm. It's in front of me. It needs to be dealt with, but I'm going to make this accommodation and push it aside so that it's not in the foreground of my mind, taking away from all the other things that I may need to be focusing on in that moment, but knowing that I'll get back to it. I really, really like the word accommodation. As you're talking about this, I also have a concept of a holding bin. If there's something, usually it's kitchen related, it is literally a holding bin for like six months. My ice cream scoop is in there because we don't eat ice cream very often. We don't buy it from the store. If we're going to get ice cream, we're going to go to the cow, to Hoffman's. Hoffman's. We are going to have legitimate good ice cream. So when we've had birthdays and family brings over vanilla ice cream and they're like, oh, where's your ice cream scoop? And I was like, um. It's in the holding bin downstairs because if I don't use it in six months or a year, it goes. Now, I am not going to get rid of the ice cream scoop because we do use that, but it's very rare. But it doesn't need to take up space I was in l- your everyday world. I was literally just about to say that. So because I don't use it often at all, it then goes into that holding bin and then I know where it is Mm -hmm. and it can hold that item, utensil, whatever. So I also have, I had a utensil holder, a round utensil holder on the counter. Mm -hmm. Like a carousel kind of? No, well actually this one was really sweet. It says Hintonac on it and it has an H 
I asked for it for Christmas years ago. And then when I started this whole decluttering organizing journey, I was determined to get my kitchen counters clear. But that is one of the things that I took off the counter. So that is in the holding bin. I'd love to find another purpose because it's so personalized, but it is in the holding bin. I don't want utensils on the counter. I just have a utensil drawer and that's it. You just touched on something else. That so many things. Kinda talk, right, that kind of talks about that, that cycle also is what do we do with those things that we have somewhat of a personal connection to? And again, how our thoughts about something impact our emotions, which then impact our behaviors. For that, for you, that crock is what I'm assuming. I think that's the word I was looking for. Is it like a crock with a... What is a crock? Oh, good Lord. I know Crocs on your feet. No, no, no. A Croc <laughs> is like a, a cylinder mm -hmm. that you would put your big utensils in. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. a Croc. Okay, I did not know it was called that. I just called it a utensil holder, but please continue. Okay, anyway. So for you, that was a personal item that had meaning to you, whether it was because someone gave it to you or whether it was because it was indicative of your name and that item has a feeling attached to it. And so often things in our environment have feelings attached to them, right? Because every thought breeds an emotion. Every emotion breeds an action. So putting that somewhere where you still have access to it for a period of time until you decide and feel comfortable and confident and at peace more so with, okay, I'm going to do this with it. Or, you know what? I've realized that I don't need that in my space. You don't have to go through your house, your car, your office, and just start throwing things away in order to get your space peaceful and calm. It's okay to put things in a place until you determine what you need and then maybe bring them back in a little bit at a time. That's a good way to put it too. I mean, part of my process is to literally empty out your space. It's interesting when I work with clients or you and we empty out your entire space, it's like all of a sudden, how did all of that, number one, fit in there? And then number two, that all can't go back. Because then you you see it like so many times. I will have clients, even friends, they'll like open a drawer or open a cabinet and they'll look in and they'll be like, oh, I use all of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that you... That was my bathroom <laughs> linen closet. Remember? Yeah. We, yes. started, we started that with like, oh, you know, Bonnie, help me to like organize my linen closet because I've got these things and I don't, I need bins or something to you, put them in you had bins they were really bad so you got <laughs> bins for christmas that was stage two. Oh, that was stage done, two yeah i had one with those wickery looking dollar store bin was all i could afford at the time but then i realized i have things shoved in bins that uh -huh. i don't even know is there oh like so your you feminine made... hygiene products mixed with covid, COVID tests, tests. <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> You made me take everything out and touch everything. And I was like, I'm going to kill her for this. I don't like her right now. Every medicine bottle, you're like, mm, expired, mm, expired. And, and how much did we throw away? Just out of my bathroom linen closet was like two kitchen trash bags full of things. I remember you sitting there on the floor with like all the band-aids and I was like, oh, good grief. Like just, you don't need this many band-aids. Like how many cuts are you going to have in the next 10 years? <laughs> I'll have you know that I now have one three inch by two inch inset in one of my bins that holds my band-aids. And if they don't fit in there, they go. I think that's great. The bin sets a limit. Yes. So when I was working with a client yesterday in her homeschool space, she was like, if it doesn't fit in that bin, I'm happy to toss. Found a thing of sticky notes that was literally two. It was like two sticky notes and the bottom one was all like dirty because it didn't have that mm -hmm. backing. So you would have gotten rid of that one anyway right? And used it. Well, yeah. And I was like looking through and I was like, do you really need these two post-it notes? And she's like, no. And I was like, great. <laughs> in the trash it went. I'm kind of coming constantly back to this cycle concept and she was ready to deal with whatever cycle she was on you cannot preach it you cannot exclamation point force someone make someone purge a space clean a space declutter a space develop peace in a space 
until they are ready, which kind of brings me back to that accommodation or that place of holding as you have in your basement tucked in a little corner. And you know, (laughs) yes, I do. (laughs) That space can be critical when it comes to taking those steps. In therapy, one of the concepts that we use is motivational interviewing. And motivational interviewing is the concept of there are stages of change. There's pre-contemplation where you don't even recognize or realize that you have a problem or that a problem exists and you just live in it. Then there's contemplation where it's like, hmm, this is hindering me in some way. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) You see it, but you don't know what to do about it. You don't know how to fix it. But moving through those stages is really important because if you're at pre-contemplation, you're overwhelmed. You can't even recognize there's an issue. If we move from pre-contemplation into contemplation and we stand at the door of our space physically or mentally and we examine our space, then we can recognize what needs to change. And then when we're ready to change, we can take the steps towards planning and action. That literally just brings to my mind decluttering is a process. It is literally that. You have to first realize this isn't working anymore. So like my client yesterday, she's three young kids. The oldest isn't going into first grade. Oh, so her cycle is keeping herself and her children alive. Correct. Every day. Every day. I know we're going to talk about this in a later episode about your space tells the story of your stress, but it was so interesting that she is now in a place where she's like, this space isn't working. We have gone back and forth since June. We've been talking about her space. So it's not like she called me last week and was like, hey, this is what I want. No, it took us talking, planning. I gave her options. She had like a Beauty and the Beast closet. Do you know what I mean? Like the a wardrobe thing. thing. Uh And you know, like in the beginning of Beauty and the Beast, when she's like in the castle and everything and it like opens and it has all the clothes, like it was literally that in her dining room with a big bulky table and she's like okay we figured out we're gonna get rid of do something else with this beauty and the beast cabinet and then there's like a serving table and the dining room table are going to go together somewhere else and she's like this bulky table it has been great for us starting out but then it isn't working anymore it's too much but she is so ready to declutter I mean just seeing the smile on her face and I felt the sense of relief once she saw her homeschool space because we completely redid it instead of the beauty and the beast cabinet and carts i recommended a credenza off of amazon that had drawers and cabinets on the bottom literally everything that she needs and her children need for homeschool are in this one cabinet it's Mm. not so tall it's not so bulky it's not in your face she was taking pictures before i was even done and like sending it to the husband. Just that sense of like getting started in that That space. But it was an entire process. Well, you said that started back in June. So bringing it full circle, it takes time. People enter into therapy, whether it's to find peace, to deal with anxiety, to reduce stress, to deal with depression. People enter into therapy with this thought that I'm gonna fix this in a couple of months. It is a very long journey. Just like decluttering your space, making accommodations, the whole process, it takes time and you have to give yourself grace through it. Because we didn't get here in a minute, we're not gonna solve it in a minute. Going through that process of not even recognizing, to recognizing, to oh boy, what do I do with this? To creating a plan and then to making that first step, that can be a long, long time. And that cycle that continues over and over again can be exhausting. So we have to get to a place of contemplation and planning and action so that when it happens, we recognize it, we can fix it or develop an accommodation so that when we can have time and space to recognize it, we can fix it. That's how we slow the cycle Mm. because we're never going to stop it. We're never going to stop it. And I think that's the thing. I know I called it a carousel earlier, why we keep getting back on and how to get off. Like you said, it's 
it's more of a slower cycle. I still have clutter in my home just because I'm an organizer and I regularly declutter doesn't mean that it doesn't pile up. Have you seen the closet that's over there? I haven't, but I'm going to check the closet <laughs> out as soon as we're finished. It's not as bad. The gate that's over there blocking Moose from getting into my bedroom was also in there. And I was like, oh good, one thing I can take out. <laughs> we do. We all have spaces because life happens. And that's the thing. Something else comes up that's more important and then things, items get pushed to the side. But what I love to help clients do in this whole decluttering process is realizing that adding more stuff to your home is making it heavy. If you can be a gatekeeper for the things that are coming in, Mm, you have to be a gatekeeper for your home and your mind. I'm not as good at that with the mind, but with my home, junk mail doesn't even hit the counter. It goes right into the recycling or the trash or whatever. Does Moose drop it in the trash as he's oh, yeah. carrying it up he the does. driveway? No, even... He needs a low... I'm sorry. He needs a low trash can to put the junk mail in. That's a really good idea. Yeah, so I've trained him to carry in the mail, and right now he carries it up the driveway and just drops it at the door and then goes inside and sits like a good boy, but I need something where it's like his trash can because I don't let him carry it in good mail it's just the junk mail so that's a really good idea <laughs> okay, see you can even elicit the animals into helping exactly they gotta they gotta help somehow they do they gotta earn their keep <laughs> <laughs> they certainly cost enough I know. It's just a cycle. Just because I help other people organize and declutter doesn't mean that I still don't have clutter in my home. Powerful statement. We are not authors and protectors and all knowing of the things that we help other people with. Do you remember, I think it was last year, Where's that this going? you and Rick were over here and we had all these ahas in the backstock area and they were just, <laughs> they were just there. They were all over the place. They were like all six cartons of them. Yes, because we buy them in bulk when they're on sale. And I did not have time to decant all of the aha waters, break down the boxes and everything else. And I remember you saying like, I've been so busy helping other people. Even Mm -hmm. the organizer doesn't have the time to keep her own space organized. And that has stuck with me. And we did it right then and there. We did. And that's what I tell my clients. If you see it, and do it even if it's five minutes it makes a difference i call it the 10 second tidy my kids watched big comfy couch when they were younger she would sit on this couch and like i forget the logistics of it but it was the 10 second tidy and this timer would go off and she would hop off the couch and she would clean up all of her things and put all of her things away and on this journey of both dealing with my clutter physically and dealing with my clutter emotionally I have adapted or accommodated the 10 second tidy and I will stand in a room or in a space, particularly if it's been a space that I've neglected a little bit Mm -hmm. for a couple of days, but that I need to be in and in a good headspace in for a while. I will be in that space and I'll look around the room and do the A-L-E-X-A person. We have Google, so you can say Alexa. (laughs) Uh, So I will say, Alexa, set a timer for three minutes or whatever I have. I will take the things in that space and either put them in my bin that needs to go upstairs that I have in my closet, or I'll put things where they need to be so that that space is functional so it's my 10 second tidy but adapted. it's i was gonna say but it's three minutes it's whatever it doesn't <laughs> have to be three minutes if i have two minutes i can say you know what the dishwasher is really bugging me because it needs to be unpacked i'm gonna do whatever i can and some of the time that race against time helps you to get something knocked out really quickly because it's good stress it gets your brain going in a different direction and it gives you that good energy yes i tell clients all the time to set a timer pick a space declutter whatever it's gonna be but you have to have almost a little toolkit for yourself okay i can set a three minute timer or it could just be one minute or it could be before tina arrives i'm gonna quickly throw every second tidy (laughs) that's what i basically (laughs) did in this office i'm like okay the cinnamon buns are in the oven coffee is ready i have to clean this up because i needed it clear the crazy cycle of clutter is never gonna go away like anything it's a process it will take time and you have to give yourself grace can't get rid of the carousel but you can ride up on the horse and just go up and down Or you can, what are they, the still benches? Yeah, the little seats. Yeah. That you sit in. So maybe you just choose a different seat. I don't know where I'm going with this. No, you get up out of the seat (laughs) and get on the horse. Ooh.
Moose agrees. Moose. <laughs> He's like, yes, get on the horse. Is there a horse outside? <laughs> All right, friends. Well, this has been the Declutter Diaries. Till next time. Have a great day, friends. Enjoy. Bye. <laughs> okay, bye. That, that was, was amazing. That was amazing.